Uh, hello everyone, my name is Clayton Rabenda. I'm the software director for SATO and today I have a presentation for you describing the proof of concept that I did for uh, Door Hacks, Door Hacks uh, Hackathon in Hangzhou. Um, what we built, or what I built, is um, a proof of concept for a concept internally we're calling open infrastructure, but which uh, doesn't really have a name yet, but what it does is it extends a Web3 grant, and I'll get into what that is, um, and kind of pushes it to the next level. Um, so before I can describe to you the work that was done, I'll have to tell you a little bit about Sado. Uh, so Sado is a tier one blockchain-like project that exists in the blockchain industry. And uh, what we provide for the DOT ecosystem is an open network layer for Web3. So I'll get into that, what exactly that means a little bit more as we go along here. Um, like I said, my name is Clayton Rabenda. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, I'll have some links at the bottom, or if you want to add another new chat, I'm always happy to speak. You can enter there, it's ClayRab. Oh, these, slides, uh, these slides are from the hackathon, so there's a bit of a matrix in here, so pardon the green. Um, but yeah, what, when, what you can think about you know, what, what Sato can provide for the DOT ecosystem is a little bit like an open MetaMask and an open Infura um, um, uh, infrastructure, right? So what our Web3 grant represents is basically the first, the first step along that path, which is something like an open MetaMask API. Uh, what we're calling that is the Sato Polkadot API module. And I'll get into that a little bit further, but like I said, for this hackathon, what I did was I leveraged that interface and extended it toward, you know, what we see as a slightly longer, uh, you know, slightly further on the horizon sort of proof of concept of um, the open Infura end of that. Um, so what we have now, this is basically a network diagram just showing the Web3 grant and what we've built so far. So basically, uh, what what Sato provides, part of our infrastructure or part of our APIs, is something that we call light, light client. So a light client is basically um, because our reference implementation is written in JavaScript, that enables us to build a JavaScript bundle that can be loaded into the browser and gives you all the APIs that are available for our full client optionally in the browser. So what that means realistically is basically you're using the wallet functions there and you're getting um, you know peer-to-peer -peer connections to a full node that will deliver you light blocks or you know blocks that just have transactions that are relevant to your light client but in theory it could be leveraged to do more sophisticated things for example we have you know we have um, peer-to-peer -peer fully encrypted diffie hellman two-way channels, and um, we have something that looks like um, encrypted email that goes end-to-end. -end. And uh, I'll show you some of the set of stuff in the end. Um, we have a, on Sato.io, we have a page called Arcade, where we demonstrate some of the, the power of Sato. And I'll show you that at the end of the presentation. Um, so you might wonder, what is a, a light client? I'll be pulling one there. Um, some people get confused about that, so just don't be confused. It, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily. It doesn't do everything that the network does. It's just optional, right? So, it doesn't mine blocks. It doesn't necessarily route transactions. It routes its own transactions, but you know, um, just I want to just make sure everybody's on board with this idea that the light client is is not ne necessarily a critical infrastructure for the network as a whole, but just a, you know, a, a optional, not an optional, but it's, it's our proof of concept for having a more peer-to-peer -peer friendly sort of network infrastructure within a blockchain. Um, so <laughs> um, what I built for the hackathon was basically this. Um, we would wrap a substrate request or a substrate transaction within a Sato transaction, broadcast that transaction to the Sato network, and then the Sato network negotiates the data with the substrate endpoint, 
right? So basically something like this. So right now, this, let me see if I can get my mouse here. You know, this is the API that we have as part of our Web3 grant here, where it says wrap in the single transaction. This currently doesn't actually wrap anything in a Sado transaction. It's just an API that lets you interact with dot, Sado, and our ZKPs. Because that's, that's, you know, as far as step one of this potential project, um, the reason that you might want to use this API are twofold, right? One is, well, you can think of it like MetaMask. It enables someone to interact with an arbitrary blockchain, but within a single context. And it gives you access to some of our existing APIs. So the because Sado is able to do a high volume throughput, we have a lot of demonstration, or we have a lot of tools that use things like ZKPs that can you can leverage to do all sort of things. So in the in the arcade, which I'll show you later, we use those to do things like shuffling cards and um, and dealing cards in a peer to peer way without a trusted third party. But those could also be used in industries like where perhaps um, someone wants to do um, like a NFT auction house or um, corporate bidding on large projects, and and but maybe the bidders want to keep their keep their bids secret. Um, potentially those, those could be leveraged. Um, so you might wonder why you'd want to do something like this because it seems sort of extra complicated to wrap your SATO request into a, sorry, to wrap your substrate request into a SATO request. So the reason you would want to do this is because this enables you to do something like an open bureau. So basically any API which DApp developers need, but which is not monetized by the by a third party or by a you know a blockchain, like for example, you know, getting balance is a very simple example. Um, potentially, you could have a wrapper around that, and you could develop toward that wrapper as a DAP developer, and then in the case that the if there's some open API that's provided by the public, you could just use that. Or if there's an entity in the world like Infura, you could use that. But in the case that those things didn't exist, you would have the option to switch to an infra infrastructure that looks something like this, where SATO provides the routing network and the monetizable you know, infrastructure to pay for those endpoints. Right? And you could be doing this in an open way, right? So this module that we, you write within the SATO infrastructure to support this could be made open source, and then anyone could be the Infura of the DOT ecosystem, for example. Um, so the details of the proof of concept look something like this. Um, this is actually what I built on that weekend. Um, pretty straightforward. This is just an example of a get balance, right? So the get balance request is the keys are held in the light client here, right? So the keys for both Sado and for the substrate endpoint are held in the light client. The transaction is built for substrate. It's then wrapped into a Sado transaction, signed and sent to the, well, both of them are signed, obviously, and then they're sent off to the Sado network. The Sado network then has a module which runs on a fill node that could be on the same server as the substrate endpoint, or it could be on a separate server, depending on you know, however that entity that's running this infrastructure wants to, wants to set that up, whatever's most convenient. But it would then send the actual underlying substrate get, get balance request to that endpoint, get the response, and then wrap that back into a SATO transaction in order to deliver it to the client. Um, there's other ways that that can be done, but this was the proof concept that, that I built here. And another example is the building a transfer. So this is a little more complicated because you need to get the balance and the knots from the substrate endpoint. But So there's two paths here. One to get the balance and then you build the actual payload to send the transaction, sign that on the light client and then send it back here. Um, yeah. 
So um, I hope that that's clear. I kind of wanted to go back to this just so um, to make sure it's all it's clear to everybody why you'd want to do this. Um, again, it's it's um, you know potentially any. API that's provided by some endpoint over here on the right um, could be provided, and this this type of infrastructure, this type of you know implementation, is not something that we have today exactly. That well, you can it can be done today through the current Web3 grant API that we built, but there's not a lot of helper functions or APIs to assist somebody to do this style. However, I did build it as a con proof of concept, and it's not. It's not too difficult. It wouldn't be difficult at all, actually. Um, if you're interested in doing something like this, please reach out to us. Um, we do have a an API that we've designed that would help support this sort of infrastructure a little more than the Web3 grant. But we're holding off on implementing that now just because we have limited resources. But if somebody were interested in actually leveraging it, we would be very happy to assist. So um, please reach out if that is something that interests you. Um, and let me just show you some of the links so you can, if, you, if anybody's interested in more information, they can find things. So um, these links are not so useful, but let me just show you. If you go through sago.io here, you can basically find everything. So from sago.io, as I said, we have a proof of concept on this arcade here. And in the arcade, we have a bunch of games. All these games are using basically... All of the data that, that supports these games is going through the blockchain, right? Which may seem a little unbelievable, but because Sado has um, something we call automatic transaction rebroadcasting, and because the way the network is designed, we use something we call routing work, we're able to do that, right? It, it seems kind of crazy at first if, when people come to the project. They think, well, you know, why would you send a bunch of this data over a blockchain, like you're using your blockchain wrong. Um, but we have built this as a proof of concept because actually in Sado world you can do things like that. And that's what enables us to do things like the open infra or open infrastructure, um, uh, open infrastructure infrastructure, right? Um, <laughs> so if you're interested in more of learning how, to, how that works or, or getting involved, over here on the developers, tab or on the blog, you'll be sent over to uh, org.sado.tech and you'll find a bunch of useful links there. So if you want the white paper, that's here. Um, that might be something that you want to get to later. Um, it's it's a real white paper. Uh, it's sort of academic and it, it explains how David and Richard were able to come up with the, basically it's economic game theory is most of the paper and and by designing the game theory properly, they were able to build this network, design this network that has these interesting um, capabilities. Um, if you're interested in just getting, you know, getting in touch with us, actually, at the bottom here, we have both a Telegram, a Twitter, and a Discord that you can reach us out, reach out to us on. Uh, I'd recommend the Telegram there. Uh, you can just, it's pretty active. It's probably the best way to get in touch with us. Um, and I'd also say if you want to look at, for further detail on the technical end, um, GitHub is now starting to look a little cleaner. We have a lot of documentation here that you can read through. But at the top, probably the most interesting thing is these links here. So for people in the Polkadot space, you'll want to hit this uh, the Polkadot integration document. And maybe check out the Web3 grant. Um, and, you know, anything else there that might be interesting to you. We have a pretty good description of the consensus al algorithm. People are interested in that. Um, this Polkadot integration gets into some of the finer details about how that API looks. Um, this actually is going to be replaced soon, so that'll be actually look different within the next probably 48 hours. Um, and then the you know, future API that uh, we may be doing in the future is there. Um, you can also read a description of our Web3 grant over here on 
the W3F's Open Grants Program. And there's also a PDF form of this document, which, well, if you go to the root of our SATA Lite implementation, there is a docs directory. And you may want to click there. And then you'll just see all our docs here. So the SATA dot integration doc is basically, it's, it's similar to the slides which I just presented, but if you want to see um, some of those network diagrams and um, the, some of the details of the, of the API, those are here. So thank you for watching. And as I said, if you're interested in learning more or, or uh, interacting with the team, please reach out. Uh, we're, we're you know, happy to help. So thanks for watching.